Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm gonna take you through how to get that flawless base makeup that just looks really good. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you enjoy. Okay, so the first step sounds really obvious, but your skin needs to be really clean. Like you don't wanna have any dry patches, any kind of just stuff on your face that your makeup's gonna cling to or anything like so my favorite thing to do is go in with some micellar water i just take it on a cotton pad i'm a lover of micellar water i think it's the best i think it's so easy so simple and it does the job so i'm just gonna clean my face with this quickly now that my skin is all clean also please ignore the difference between my neck and my face that will change when i put my makeup on i just haven't faked out my face i feel like i've perfected my skincare routine this might not work 100% for you but I just love these products so much it's quite excessive it's five steps for someone who doesn't do skincare I've got quite an intense skin prep routine so my first step is this quarterly purifying toner it is so good this is like the exact one just in case you want to know what it is it's so nice it smells like you've just gone to a spa I love it and it actually feels like it does something I feel like it tightens my pores I feel like it just has my skin ready for makeup so I'm just putting this on a cotton pad and then I'll just kind of wipe it over my face next up I'm going to use another Causely product and it's the radiant serum complexion correcting serum thing I love it it also feels so luxurious like the sound it makes like that I think it sounds so luxurious I just put this on my face a bit. I'm trying to see what I'm actually doing. And these two products like coupled together give such like a soft feeling to my skin, which is exactly what I'm after. If you haven't watched any of my makeup tutorials or anything before, you won't know, but I love my skin to literally feel wet before I do my makeup. I feel like it makes my makeup go on so much better. The application process is easier. It blends so much quicker. So that's why I have a very long skin prep routine. Next up is this product, which when I first tried it, I didn't actually like it as a skin prep product. I loved it as a moisturizer, just not for under my makeup. I didn't feel like it was the wet look I was after, but coupled with these products, I love it. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Water Cream and I love it. It is such a thick moisturizer. It's like just so nice. I also really make sure to concentrate the moisturizer and the things that I'm putting on around my dry areas obviously different people have different dry areas or anything on their face but around my nose and then under my eyes I think under your eyes is so important to keep moisturized because for me I set that place with quite a bit of powder well I set it um so I don't want it to become like crusty over the time I want it to stay nice and healthy and just nice looking can you see already how glowy and healthy just like it's shiny but healthy looking my skin looks it's like the glass skin look that I'm after then the last actual like product I'm gonna put on my face is the watermelon pink juice moisturizer from glow recipe I love this this is just the travel sized one I do have the big one but this was just my makeup bag so I thought I'd use this one and I'm just gonna put like a pump on each cheek and then a little bit on my forehead and then just rub that in for me this is one of my favorite skin prep products it gives the wet feel like the magic cream it gives a really nice thick moisturized feel but this one i think it just tops off like the wetness i'm after and then the final step before i actually start putting my makeup on is the glow recipe watermelon glow ultra fine mist and i literally just spray this over my face a few times and then just like let it sink in and this literally does actually make my face wet that's why i've got to wait after because you want to make sure all your products have sunk in before going in with your foundation and things otherwise it might go patchy and cling to the certain bits so make sure all your products are like actually absorbed okay so just quickly this is what my skin looks like up close it's just very very glowy but it's just ready for my makeup i just love the way it looks i mean i feel like this is a bit much if i wasn't putting makeup on for like actual skincare but for skin prep it's perfect the first step of my makeup routine is foundation and i use the wet n wild photo focus dewy foundation i have shade golden beige i'm just gonna put a bit on each cheek and then on my forehead i actually don't use as much as i used to i used to definitely use more foundation but i kind of realized this one just blends out so well that 
you don't need too much. In my opinion, blending out your foundation with a brush is so important. For me, it just keeps the coverage, it keeps like the flawless look, it's really even. I'm a brush lover. This one's from Morphe. It was a Christmas one, like probably about three, four years ago. That's why it's gold, but I believe it's literally just their foundation brush. They still like stock, but in black. And when blending out your foundation, you want to do it in small downward motions, like really light, but downward because your hairs go down, you don't want to disturb your hairs underneath. It's actually really light because again, you don't want to disturb any of the skin prep. You want it to stay kind of exactly how it is and then just move around and just blend it all out. Me personally, and if you have the same kind of skin type as me with the drier like nose area, I don't put any foundation directly on my nose. I just kind of use the excess that's on the brush at the end of blending out my whole face to then go over my nose and use that. I also don't take my foundation all the way up to the like inner corner of my eye just because I'm gonna focus a lot of concealer there and I don't want it to be too much. For me, when you've had your skin being really moisturized and wet, your foundation literally melts into your skin. I'll show you up close what my foundation looks like now, but it's incredible. So this is what the foundation looks like blended in obviously no extra products on top just my foundation the glow is still coming through obviously it is a dewy foundation that's why but incredible another huge bit of advice that i would say is be so gentle with your makeup routine at the end of the day it's so precise you wouldn't do like an artwork and like just slap things on like be precise if you want it to look flawless you need to be gentle precise like take care i'm now going to go in with my concealer currently i'm loving the infallible 24 hour concealer from l'oreal i use shade vanilla i think it's such a good shade when i first got it i didn't know whether it was going to be um light enough but it's actually so light so love it i'd also say that this is definitely a medium to full coverage concealer um so you don't need that that much i mean i'm gonna put about that much on each eye and then a little bit in the center of my face so that's where I focus my concealer. I do just like to keep it centre on my face. I don't want to do too much because, again, I don't want it to look cakey. I just kind of want it all to blend together. I blend my concealer out with a sponge as well. I think it's easier. It just is so quick and simple. I'm not like a concealer brush lover yet, anyway. And again, be so gentle when you're tapping it out. You don't need to be smashing your face with your beauty blender. Just really lightly tap. It might take a couple more taps, but... Then for blending in the under eyes, make sure you focus the concealer where you put it. I used to always kind of just take my beauty blender and just go like this straight away, but you put the concealer there because you want it there. You don't need it all over your face. So I kind of just focus it like this for a few seconds. And then once that's all blended, I'll then take it a bit further out. With most, if not all, steps of a makeup routine, I've said it once and I will continue to say it for the rest of my life, you can always add but you can't take away. If I put way too much concealer on, it's like, and then it looks like rubbish on my face. I'd have to take all my stuff off. If I do too little, I can always add a little dot more. So that is so important. The next step is cream bronzer. And I have this one from Be Perfect Cosmetics. It's called Cronza and I have it in shade Pecan. It's just a really nice formula. I love it. Everyone always thinks I use the Chanel bronzer. I'm guessing it looks like this. It's not Chanel, it's Be Perfect and it's really affordable and it's really good. I'm going to use this Morphe M6 brush to just blend it in. I used to use um I used to use this Sigma contour and blush brush and I still love it. I'm just preferring this to do my bronzer at the minute. And I just take a couple swipes on my brush and then I just really lightly dab on my cheekbone where I want to focus the bronzer. Again, I'll just really lightly dab that. It comes off the brush really easily you don't need to like press really hard and then any excess that's on my brush i will just take around my forehead and then with the same brush just without really much product on it i'll then just blend out really simply by just literally tapping around the area i will also take this brush with any like excess on it down my nose just to kind of contour that the last liquid product that i use is liquid blush and i've gone back to my be perfect the cheek blush i had someone ask me what shade i used of it and i was like oh my god i haven't literally used that in so long so gone back to this one i love it it's in shade just peachy so good you need the tiniest amount like the tiniest amount i like to focus my blush quite high on my cheek so i'll do it there i'm going to blend that out with the sigma setting powder brush and again really light tapping motions 
just focusing it where you want it. Okay, this is what my makeup looks like before I'm doing any setting. It's obviously very glowy still, but it all blends together really nicely. There's not bits that stick out. It's just all very even and flawless. In my opinion, setting your under eyes could be the most important step of a flawless makeup routine. If your under eyes don't look flawless, I feel like the rest of your face kind of just doesn't either. So my two favorite setting powders are the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter in Lavender. Please excuse how dirty the top of this is, that's disgusting. Or the Huda Beauty Cupcake Setting Lip Powder. Love them both. I don't know which I'm gonna use today. Might go with this one. Actually no, I'm going to use my Fenty one because I always use my Huda one in my videos. So this is in shade Lavender, I don't know if I said. It's a very brightening powder. It's literally like bright white. Um, and I love it. I love an under eye that's really bright and just nice. So the first step of setting your under eyes for a flawless look is to make sure you blend out your concealer again. Because it probably will have creased by the time you get around to doing it because you did your cron cronzer. You did your bronzer. And then you did your blush so it's been there for a while so yeah blend out any creases and then on a powder puff or a dry beauty blender i have a dry beauty blender this is actually disgusting i need to clean it but i'm just going to take a bit on my beauty blender just like that and then tap off the excess in the palm of your hand so just do this to kind of disperse the powder and make it set into your beauty blender or powder puff and then really lightly just press like this where you want to set Okay, so this is the difference from set to not set. I do as I love both. This is just a lot less practical because it will crease. This stays like that all day. So now for powder bronzer, I'm going to use the Sigma Matte Bronzer in Light. It's really good. I've had this for probably about a year now and I love it. I also use it every single time I do my makeup and I'm nowhere even near hitting pan. I can still see that it says Sigma. So it lasts you a long time. And I'm going to take this on a big fluffy brush. I have no idea where this brush is from. I'm going to say Amazon or something. I have a couple that are this silver colour and I think they were Amazon. I think I've had this for probably eight years. Really lightly again, I'm just going to tap that into my pan, tap it off. I always feel like Jeffree Star when I do that. I used to watch Jeffree Star and like James Charles and that on YouTube. And they used to always do that and tap off the excess. I think it was called Fallout. Was it good fall out? Don't know. Um, but I just do it. It's a habit. And then really lightly in circular motions, just take that over your bronzer. Also using the same bronzer, I'm just going to contour my nose. Contouring your nose is so important, even if you like your nose shape, because when you put foundation over it, it kind of just blends into your face. And I think doing this just brings it back. You don't have to try and make it small. You don't have to try and make it look like a different shape, but just bringing some life back into your face and the dimension still being there. Is so important and i'm using the ggb eyeshadow brush it's probably an eyeshadow brush to do this i love these they're so good the quality is unreal i've got an eyebrow gel from ggb as well and it's so good i've been obsessed with this powder blush since i got it this is the laura mercier blush blush color infusion in shade bellini to me that is like the most perfect shade of blush i love it and again i'm just going to focus this really lightly obviously but in the same places that i did my cream blush if you're after the kind of dewy glowy clean girl kind of makeup highlighter is so important i feel like i remember a time when nobody used highlighter and finally it's come back but i have this Too faced moon crush highlighter in shade shooting star if you know you know i had an attachment to my old Too faced highlighter i'd probably had it for five years i dropped it once when i was skiing four years ago and i had about this much of it in the pan and I, it lasted me literally for so long and then i got this one and it's just as good it's because i couldn't find one that was just as good but this one is so i've moved on from it i just take this on this morphe m510 brush i don't know if it's meant for highlighter but it's really good for it and really lightly obviously i don't even know if i have to say it anymore just swirl that kind of in the section that you want to highlight. I like my cheeks and then at the center of my nose. I know I said before that you can always add more. With highlighter, do not go in with too much because it can look just like a streak on your cheek, which is not the look that we're going for. 
To highlight my nose, I'm going to use the Sigma Pencil E30 brush. It's just a really, really defined tip that, what the hell is that on my hand? Um, that is just really good for like precise highlighting. Now it's time for my favourite step and this is setting spray. I will rave about this until the day I die. The Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. It's the best one ever. So to set my face, I'm just going to spritz this over my face quite a lot. I like to use a lot of it. I think it's just beautiful. I basically drench my face in it. You can probably see how wet my face is right now. I'm going to let this sink in and dry, do the rest of my makeup products, my eyebrows, my eyeliner, my lips, and come back for the finished result. So this is the finished makeup look. I love it. I think this is actually one of my favourite times. Like I've like, what am I trying to say? It's like the favorite, one of my favourite times with my makeup. I feel like this is a, my favourite makeup look I've ever done. So this is what my skin looks like up close. I just think it looks so good. Like I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet, but I think... It looks like skin, it looks, obviously it's not natural because I've got eyeliner and lipstick and foundation and all makeup on, but I feel like it looks like me still. <laughs> I don't know, you might think Daisy looks so different without makeup on, but I just, yeah, I feel like I finally perfected my makeup routine, which has taken me quite a while, but I feel like the techniques, the makeup, the way I do it, everything, I love and I'm so happy with so I thought I'd had to share it with you so you can get your makeup looking really nice as well. I will link everything like all the products I used with all my shades and things in the description so if you do want to pick anything up or you want to know what shade I am whatever then it'll all be down there so yes if you did enjoy please like and subscribe it means the world and I'll see you in my next video. Love you.